The 6.5 is on the road at Supercomputing 2023 here in Denver, Colorado. We are in Lenovo's booth and it is rocking. You can hear all the excitement here. And quite frankly, when you combine Supercomputing, whether it be flop space compute or tops, with Tops AI, the flops, baby. <laughs> it, I mean, how could you not get excited about this? And, and Daniel, it's great to be here. Yeah, I was thinking more maybe it's the evolution of supercomputing is from flops to tops. Here we go. And we go. 2023, this is the ultimate transitional year. And we've had conversations about this, the changing in, of the guards as workloads move to more and more AI. And I mean, what made this place an absolute crazy uh, destination in terms of people is all the interest in AI. We're seeing it go from being something very academic, very research driven to the interest expanding like crazy, Pat. And you and I could barely get in here last night. Yeah, it was crazy. We almost got uh, stampeded, I'm not kidding you, about 10,000 people waiting to get in and we were all on time. I love being on time and so were the other 10,000 people trying to get in here. But no, uh, the 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 evolution of the industry has been incredible, and, and not just is it national labs, uh, uh, local labs, uh, but in commerce, whether it's fluid dynamics for designers, uh, whether it's uh, pharmaceutical drug discovery, all the different ways we use high performance computing. And one vendor uh, that has really, that keeps on super strong and high performance computing uh, was uh, Lenovo, and I like to, uh, Thanks, Sergio, for coming on the show again. Bless you. And also uh, Ian. invite Ian from the Flatiron Institute onto the show. First time of the 6.5, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Yeah, it's great to have you both. Great to uh, have you for the first time on the show, Ian. You know, we talked a little bit about the pedigree of, of Lenovo. Uh, and you're sitting here probably because you have a, a partnership. But I would love to talk a little bit about that. You know. Um, you know, a lot of provenance with Lenovo in terms of education and technology, but talk about the partnership that you developed with Lenovo and why you went down that path. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so a little bit of background, the Flatiron Institute is the in-house research group of the Simons Foundation. Uh, and in 2014, we had a computer. We had about eight cores. <laughs> And over the course of about 10 years, we have gone from eight cores to about 200,000 processor cores and about 800 GPUs. And our partnership with Lenovo has allowed us to sort of go on a ramp, which is sort of unexpected, that basically that you can go at such, we were, we were growing at 50% a year, 25% a year, and that allows you to go five orders of magnitude in the number of CPUs. And the other, this particular machine that we talk about today, which is the, the Henri machine, the top of the green 500, that's based on SR670s from Lenovo, which are a 3U air-cooled case. And for a supercomputer, it's incredibly accessible. This machine went from sitting on our loading dock to being on the top of the Green 500 in less than four weeks. Um, and it was a machine that basically we could assemble ourselves. Uh, it's, a, it's very tunable in terms of how it's, the pieces of the components that are used in the energy. And so it's, uh, we get to, our partnership with Lenovo allowed us to go take very cutting edge technology that was also accessible from a small organization and allowed us to become a relatively large organization. What kind of workloads are being, uh, where we talked a little in the green room about the type of workloads, but uh, can you tell the audience what's running or uh, what's going to run on the systems? Well, it's one of the things that makes it sort of unique is that we have a group in biology, a group in astrophysics, a group in quantum systems, which is sort of first principle material science, a group in neuroscience and mathematics. And the machines we have have to run those codes from all of those people every day. And so they tend to be a little bit, we take the superset of everyone's requirement and that's what we choose. So almost all of our systems have a terabyte of RAM in HPC, which is almost unheard of. It's a lot of RAM. Um, and we have a, a lot of cores and we have a lot of GPUs. And one of the things that's changed in the last several years has been the impact of AI. So we've got, we went for a while, we were doubling the GPU farm every six months. And one GPU goes to two, goes to four, that's pretty easy. But 256 goes to 512 becomes a, a more of a technical challenge. These use a lot of power. They take a lot of cooling. They're an interesting machines to support. And as that's gone, we now have people who are doing inference on um, systems biology, um, gene function, uh, simulations for astronomy codes, so multi-body simulations, uh, forward-looking simulations. Um, and then in the last, six months or so, we've had people looking at foundational models for science. So looking at things like large language models for how you might do large scale simulations of fluid dynamics, right. which involves 
like before, we thought it was hard before with sort of getting GPUs. Now that you have to have many GPUs tightly connected working together, that's even that's even a more challenging environment. And that's another place where our, our partnership with Lenovo has been really very beneficial to us. We are expecting a delivery in the middle of December of our first machine optimized for large language models, which is a water-cooled H100 system with 1.6 terabit of networking per node. Um, so the, the, the machine's really designed for this particular challenging problem, which is also what everyone else wants to do. So they're very hard to, they're hard to get there uh, and hard to support. So Sergio, I hear going from eight cores to hundreds of thousands of cores and GPUs. How on earth does Lenovo support something like that? And my guess is it happened at a time when these types of of uh, products were hard to get as well. Yes. I mean, how do you, how does Lenovo yeah. approach something so, like this? That's a fantastic scale? question, but let me, let me kind of present an analogy with a sport that we all love that is the Formula One, right? Yeah. We were there. So when you're in Formula One, you need the best machine and the best pilot, right? These guys are the best <laughs> pilots in the world. They have the best science, scientists, they have the best knowledge, right. how to, to take the most of our machine. And we have the best machines in the world. We have the best infrastructure in the world. How we plan for this partnership to work is not only Lenovo, also we have NVIDIA very well involved in all of this. And together with uh, Flatiron, the, the code name of the machine is Henry. So we build Henry together. They, they use Henry as much as they can. But I think everything starts from the, the top. Our Lenovo's mission is to be tackling the most compelling and the most difficult challenges in humanity. And the Flat Iron Institute, the Simon Foundation uh, mission, is to use advanced technologies to advance in science in specific areas like uh, universe, uh, machine learning for proteins, analysis, all these complex uh, things. So I think everything starts from the top. We were planning through very difficult times to build this best Formula One car in the world, but we have the, f the best pilots in the world. Right. That's the, the secret sauce. I love that. I, 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 anything yeah, I've watched. I don't know, we just went up to you on flops to tops. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it gets better than flops Let to me tops. But... Another, another data. So, because like in Formula One, speed is key, right? So, this machine is, is the performance is 65 gigaflops per watt. Why the per watt is important? Because it's not only to be fast, it's also to be efficient. And this is an efficient machine. Uh, and this fine. is a machine that you can go through the door of a data center. You don't need to break any wall, anything, to move it inside the data center. This is a standard rack. I was absolutely going to ask that question when you started okay. kind of alluding to some of the sustainability. By the way, if you want to stay with the F1 analogy, same thing they're doing, moving towards electrification, lower, you know, they're doing more and more output, smaller and smaller engine, less fuel, more, more electricity. Um, so this is a problem that everyone in the world is trying to solve. You don't only want to have this infinite compute power, which infinite's exciting, but you also want to do it sustainably. And what I understand about Henry is that you were able to accomplish that. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, I, I'd like to hear both Sergio from you about how Lenovo's approaching the sustainability challenge and then from the flat iron standpoint, what is your sort of ethos as it relates to being sustainable? So Sergio, start so with you. The of Lenovo is simple in concept, it's very difficult to achieve, right? So everything we do has a sustainable uh, method behind. So Neptune, for example, water cooling, in a, in a peak performance, you can save 40% of energy using water cooling technology. And in the case of Henry, we are doing that. So it's very simple, but it's very difficult to achieve in a standard rack form factor, right? With all the heat that you put in these big processors and big GPUs. But they are the users, so they can explain you how they do it. Well, for us, the foundation has always, this has been an area of sensitivity for them that they would like to be, have a low, as low carbon program as possible at the same time offering a, a leadership class computing environment. Uh, and for us, the GPUs, they use, they use a tremendous amount of power. Um, the H100 is a, it's sort of a, is a marvel because it uses, it's about twice the performance for a similar amount of electricity. Uh, and the other aspect of this is that the Lenovo box can be tuned so that 
elements of the system that would use electricity would not give you a lot in the performance can be turned way down. So the CPUs can be turned down if, we're not, if they're not contributing to the application at the time. And so from our perspective, this allows us to, to lower our footprint. Um, we're in a data center which is using wind energy credits intentionally so that we have a lower footprint there. And we have to buy offsets. The, the foundation buys offsets for all of our other computing environment. So this allows us to, to basically just lower our footprint and maintain a high performance. And also the magic is you have standard racks and you connect them with a high speed InfiniBand from NVIDIA, right? 200 giga, gigabit, right? Well, they, this one is 200, uh, 200 times two, it's 400. Wow, that, that's very fast, but you need to do that in order to have parallel process, right? Yeah, I mean, sometimes we forget the fact that you have to network these things together, have coherent memory systems, and what we're seeing in all, all our research is that the next bottleneck could be the network. And it's something that we're looking at. By the way, uh, uh, kudos to you on embracing the water cooling, both of you. I mean, it is funny that not a lot of the hyperscalers uh, weren't doing it, and now uh, clearly their next generation of data centers uh, that they, they they realize they have to do it. You know, Lenovo's blazing the trail here. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, the work that you're doing with Flatiron, Sergio, how does this fit into your overall strategic goals here? You know, whether it's you know making an impact on the planet uh, and doing these amazing things, uh, whether it's uh, where you sit on sustainability. Uh, just, just uh, overall, how does Flatiron fit into the big picture of Lenovo strategically? It's all of the above. So, as I mentioned before, we are tackling the most challenging aspects of the, the most difficult challenging that we see in the humanity, right? right. And one of the most difficult challenges now is the environment, sustainability. So it's in our mission, it's in everything we do, we, we think about it. But also in this case with flat iron, look at what they are doing. They are using machine learning simulations to improve the genomic, to investigate the universe, the quantum physics, right? So yeah. this is key for us, and it's a fantastic partnership for us. And I wanted to mention just a little bit about water. We switched to Lenovo water-cooled servers for our facility in San Diego about four years ago, um, and it was a... We, it was a decision we debated for a while because it's a, a step to is, go to... Is it chilled water? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we okay. use chilled water. But it's chilled water in water cooling is 60, from 60 something to 100 degrees. Right. But from our perspective, it's a decision that we don't regret at all. It's that we, the machines are more efficient because there's no fans in them. Sure. Um, they, we actually lose fewer components because the, the temperature in the systems is much more consistent. Sure. So we replace fewer dims. Um, and then this year when we did a, our most recent procurement, the density that you can go to in a water-cooled solution is much higher because right. you don't have to have the airflow and the fans. So we have 72 nodes per rack, which allows us to put the next cluster in six racks. And what we discovered, a bit surprisingly, was that the networking cables are so expensive that yes. the density becomes incredibly important. And if you can make it in six racks rather than 10, you can reduce the networking budget by about a half a million dollars. So suddenly, the yeah. water-cooled stuff is saving you a tremendous amount of money simply because the form factor is smaller, the cables are shorter, it's denser. And from our perspective, we're going to run out of electricity before we run out of space. So the density was not so important from just a facility perspective, but it became incredibly important from a cost perspective in the in the networking itself um, and so that was uh, the, the solution I think we essentially we bought our last set of air-cooled servers on a large scale because the, the these things are only getting higher wattage on the CPUs um, more, more challenging to support and the liquid just does a lot better job right? for sure I mean Sergio just a kind of final more of a you know concluding question but you know super computing is one of these exciting frontiers future area how do you see kind of these types of partnerships shaping growth and helping build Lenovo on a, on a global scale. How is this adding value to the bigger vision of Lenovo? So this kind of Thank you for the question. This kind of partnership, what they do is they challenge Lenovo, right? They put Lenovo in the boundaries of what they, our machines, our engineer can do. But also, I think, because of what Ian is sharing, we collaborate in developing new methods to practice science, right? And it's very important for us. So in the future, what I see is now they are very well involved in machine learning, AI, all these new technologies that everybody is trying to use. 
we have this from many years ago. Right. Somebody, a company, an organization that is using this for, from many years ago. We can take that knowledge and put it in the public service, right? And this, I think this is a, a, a mission that we have as Lenovo, to share these this learnings with other customers. And it also really helps break through uh, societal needs, of course, safety, wellness, climate, it's all these different be, things, these big problems that are very, very hard to solve that Accelerated and supercomputing can, can support. So Ian, Sergio, thank you so much for joining thank the 6.5. Thank you, Absolutely. thanks. All right, everybody, subscribe to the 6.5 on the road here, or subscribe to all of our shows. We'd appreciate all of the above. But for this episode here at Supercomputing 2023 in Denver, Patrick, for us, for our guests, for everyone out there, we'll see y'all later.